My name is Aram, and my pronouns are he, him. I am the writer and producer of the Dungeon & Dragons podcast, God's Fall. My name is Dylan, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a physicist from Canada. Welcome to Kill Every Every Monster. Monster. This week on Kill Every Monster, we're featuring the Pixie. describes pixies as standing barely a foot tall and resembling diminutive elves with gossamer wings like those of dragonflies or butterflies, bright as the clear dawn and luminous as the full moonrise. <laughs> Curious as cats and shy as deer, pixies go where they please. They like to spy on other creatures and can barely contain their excitement around them. The urge to introduce themselves and strike up a friendship is almost overwhelming. Only a pixie's fear of being captured or attacked stays its hand. (laughs) Those who wander through a pixie's glade might never see the creatures, yet hear the occasional giggle, gasp, or sigh. (sighs) Pixies array themselves like princes and princesses of the Fae, wearing flowering gowns and doublets of silk that sparkle like moonlight on a pond. Some dress in acorns, leaves, bark, and the pelts of tiny woodland beasts. They take great pride in their regalia and beam with joy when they are complimented on their ensembles. In this episode, we're joined by Matt Brown. Matt, whose pronouns are he, him, is a video producer, streamer, and professional dungeon master from Melbourne, Australia. You may know him from Split the Party and its self-titled Actual Play series, which has just wrapped its fourth season, the TTRPG-themed morning show, Good Morning RPG, on Twitch, or their past chaotic shenanigans reacting to their cast member George on the latest Australian season of Beauty and the Geek. He's also a professional Dungeon Master who you can hire for your games or corporate events at dungeonmasterforhire.com.au. You can find his details at NoFunBrown on Twitter and his channel Split the Party on both YouTube and Twitch through the at split underscore the party on Twitter. Welcome to the show, Matt. Oh, thanks for having me. I am I am very excited for this one. All right, Matt. What are pixies to you? The prime method at which my cast members have tried to annoy me through extensive use of the polymorph spell. For a challenge rating quarter thing, something that is is wildly unexpected to be. No, they're little delicate creatures. They they have a garbage. Supposed AC. to be, yeah. They have a garbage AC, relatively speaking. They have a single hit point, and then they have nothing but like third and fourth level spells that just fuck with players' heads. They remind me of the minion rule from fourth edition. Have you seen that? So they, everything has like, you know, a decently high AC, but everything has one hit point. Uh, so they're really easy to take down if you can get to them. Pixies are very social creatures. They would rarely be alone, so that would actually work. Like they're like you're very rarely going to find a pixie. Usually, it's going to be a group of pixies, a flock of pixies, if you will. There's a bunch of little tiny fey creatures. There's brownies. There's sprites. Sprites tend to be a little bit more physical, but are basically the same thing as a pixie. In fact, in this world where Pearl exists. It's the sprites who train the pixies to defend themselves. Like, come on, guys, you got to do something here. And they brought him some swords and crossbows. Like, try, at least try. This is going to cause issues for us in the future, but I maintain that it's ridiculous to break up pixie and sprite into two completely separate creatures and not just have like, this is the magic little floaty fucker. This is the stabby little floaty fucker. Yeah, they should be the same thing. They should just be the stabby and floaty version, especially when they give no indication that their cultures are different in any way whatsoever like for every other like tacitly murderable species like if you go to orcs they have a punchy orc and then they have a wizard orc there's a stabby lizard folk and a wizard lizard folk and then for some reason there are two specific species of fey and one of them is magic and one of them has a little sword and they never speak ever i do like to think with orcs like there aren't differences there's just like a guy who when he runs in and punches you shouts fireball Right. But I get what you're saying. Like there should just be different versions of the same people who who can do different things. You shouldn't have one that's physically stronger and therefore a completely different species. D&D gets into a lot of trouble 
doing that kind of thing. D&D hates ecology. It would make the monster manual so much more interesting if you like... If you tied it to one world? Not even necessarily if you tied it to one world. If you sort of implied an interrelatedness of creatures, like the pixies relate to the sprites, relate to hags. Like pixies don't like hags, but they're around them sometimes. They tried to do it a little in Volo, and I liked it, and I feel like they should do it more. I want a drawing of the court. <laughs> the pixie court or the fey court? Any fucking court, how they relate to each other, what the rules are, how they exchange information, how they decide on, like, is it just like they just say it's a court? Yeah, do a bunch of them gather in a, in a forest clearing, and then that's the court? Like, is it, is, it, is it informal? Is it formal? Did Wild Beyond the Witchlight do any of this? Nearly every other fey creature, I say nearly every other, like a bunch of the fey creatures reference the fey wild as like the place where the courts exist. They specifically reference the courts. Hags in particular do this. Pixies, as far as the sort of stat block implies, are squirrels. They just live in actual regular <laughs> forests. They don't come to the fey wild, which I personally love is love the idea that like occasionally another fey shows up and they're like, oh, no, no, we're in charge. Because you left us here and we were the only Fae around, so we decided that we were the whole court. There's just like a bunch of pixies playing court. Yay! <laughs> New rules! <laughs> it's like a tea party. Yeah, yeah, everything's a tea party. There's Pixies do nothing that doesn't involve tea in some aspect. Looking at what I've got here, it's like they array themselves like princes and princesses of the Fae. But it's, but so is this is this a dress up for them, or are they actually you know do we have royalty pixies, or is it all a facade? There was something I read that said up to seventy percent of pixies refer to themselves as royalty in some way. <laughs> that wasn't a thing you read around. That was when we were talking about them on a stream, and you made that up. <laughs> oh, was that us? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I just quoted myself. Not even a thing you wrote. <laughs> just a thing you said once. <laughs> it was transcribed, Dylan. That counts as writing. Yeah, sure. You got to quote yourself, like quote, stream, tweet that, put that audio clip I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to quote myself. I'm going to have to quote myself a third time. It's like Inception quoting. Well, at this point, the Inception's worked because you believed it. I did. I fully believed it. You incepted yourself years ago. I read this incredibly insane insightful piece okay so we got three <laughs> options right now for the for the pixies relation to the courts one is that it's like a weird convergent evolution thing they're literally just like squirrels that happen to turn into magical people and then like a hag or like another actual face showed up and they went oh we're just like you we must be part of this i don't care what the other two are i'm already <laughs> voting for for one but please go ahead Option two is I want them to be part of the Unseelie Fae. Like, I want them to be part of the mean court, and the mean court kicked them out and left them on Earth. Because <laughs> they were too nice? Not even necessarily nice, just obnoxious. Like, they're, they're so, like... Uh, they were too annoying for mean court. Like, George. We have a specific duchy we need you to handle. So if you just go through this portal... No, don't, don't look back. Just go through the portal. Thank you. Perfect. Close. Why are there 10,000 of us going through? I'm sure that you don't need this many people. It's fine. Don't worry. They're really strong. First of all, pixies don't ask questions ever. <laughs> there's never a follow-up question with pixies. I imagine with the evil court, there's like a certain emo vibe they are trying to maintain. And up with pixies isn't really going to help with that. <laughs> We mentioned this a couple times. Pixies are weird in that they're super powerful in terms of magic. So, at will, a pixie can cast Druidcraft. Once each day, a pixie can cast Confusion, Dancing Lights, Detect Evil and Good, Detect Thoughts, Dispel Magic, Entangle, Fly, Phantasmal Force, Polymorph, and Sleep. They also have superior invisibility. You don't want any of their abilities going off at court. The fact that they could be flying around invisible, <laughs> hearing everything you say, the fact that they can listen to your thoughts, the fact that they like actually specifically know if things are evil or good, like they're just reading people. That's not even getting into if they drop a dispel magic, entangle, phantasmal force, polymorph, or confusion just in the middle of court. Like these are a threat 
I don't think the Pixies were ever evil either. They just kind of absorb whatever the general vibe is going around. So if they're around evil people, they're a little bit ha 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 And if they're around good people, they become a little bit just kind of mischievous. They're like bad Janet from The Good Place. Oh, yeah, I like that. I don't think they get mischievous around good people. I think they that whole tiny tricksters thing in the fact they pick that up from being around evil people they're just terrible at it right <laughs> right, right. like if you're an, a malicious person but you're just not good at it you're doing shit like tying shoelaces together and you're like haha that was a funny prank right it's like when a 13 year old hurls one roll of toilet paper and thinks they've just done the most amazing prank ever I'm a rebel <laughs> the pixies with their sleeves ripped off i threw two rolls of toilet paper i'm gonna get on my design soapbox for a minute armor class of 15 is pretty good for a low level creature it's it's not half bad it's a 50 50 chance to hit with your good stat basically i have a problem already yes a creature like a pixie should have two different acs and one should be if they're flying because hitting a pixie who's standing is a hell of a lot different than hitting, hitting a pixie in midair should be a hell of a lot harder than AC 15. Here's how you do that. You add a ability in their stat block that is just fluttering transit or something like that. Some fluttering movement and it's disadvantage to hit while it's in the air. Then you should, you could be able to lower their AC as a result too. Cause 15 at disadvantage is hard. Well, it should be. Try to shoot a pixie with an arrow. It's also one hit point. True, true. It should be hard. 15 at disadvantage is really rough, but also one hit point means that if you hit it, it dies. This is a creature, once again, that was designed to not be fought. Yeah. And that's why it, it is as weak as it is. It should be a little bit stronger and a little bit harder to kill. But you don't have to concern yourself with that because it's not meant to be fought, except you put it in the book of things for murdering. Yeah, yeah. You put a stat block in there. Someone's going to try and kill it at some point. Or they're going to see how, you know, they're going to see how it can cast a bunch of fourth and fifth level spells once a day for free, effectively. And magic resistance is something that I have an objection to. It has magic resistance. It's got advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Which, if it were like enchantment or charm effects, then that's because it has fey heritage, which makes sense. That's just grandfathered in. It doesn't matter. Every spell that I would be concerned about having advantage on is half damage on a failed save. Right, so what does it matter? Why do I care? If I cast Burning Hands at a team of pixies, there aren't any more pixies. Right, so instead of magic resistance, they should have evasion. Give them evasion. You don't want them to go down immediately. Give them this weird little fluttering thing where there's disadvantage to hit them. And suddenly you have something that could exist. Because right now, a flock of bats will annihilate a pixie court. Any kind of spell save effect that isn't dexterity by the look of it as well will also just murder them. They've got a plus two to wisdom, which isn't... It's nothing to scoff at if you're going up against a one-quarter critter, right? No, I mean... Yeah, one quarter. Is it, What's a goblin? Is that a quarter or is that an eighth? It's a quarter. So yeah, similar AC as well, but they have seven health instead. Nothing about a pixie makes me think they're wise. Wisdom has always been a weird stat because like, they have to be able to see things and be aware of things. For some reason, that's translated to wisdom because pixies are not wise. The whole point of them is that they don't plan, they don't think ahead, they don't consider consequences. They just have like an innate ability to avoid danger and that keeps them alive. That's street smarts, then. Yeah, <laughs> street smarts. That's that's wisdom. That's street smart because intelligence is your, like your book smarts and your planning. This is something where I think you might want to tune down the stat and give them the skill, like you give them insight or you give them the wisdom saves. Because yeah, I would say in general they're not wise, but if they don't have that tuned like street smarts, then they're going to walk face first into danger. Especially given that they have an urge to introduce themselves so strong that it's nearly self-destructive. That's my favorite part. Well, now that's why their intelligence is lower. Yeah, because like, mm, they want to. Also, it's leaf smarts. We're going to call it leaf smarts. Bunch of pixies just going over, scritching a bunch of wolves because they're like, look, I found some puppies. Pixies should have like this just innate likeness about them. I think creatures just like them. Birds and other things that, could, that should eat them don't for some reason. And maybe it's their pixie dust. 
right? Like maybe, maybe they choke on it or something. Maybe there's some natural reason why they don't get eaten. Maybe they taste bad. But this is part of why, like, the fact that it doesn't reference the Feywild is weird to me. Because, like, the idea of actually having pixies existing in a forest somewhere doesn't work because due to that separation from sprites, and I think in the sprite stats, it actually specifically says something about them not liking pixies. They don't want to hang out with them. They have no defenses, which means either they need a way that will keep all of the animals away or they're always invisible because they have superior invisibility but pixies can't see other pixies that are invisible based on the rules so like that doesn't work an entire society that cannot see each other because otherwise owls will come for them which is also a great thing i do really like the idea of a group of pixies that stays perpetually invisible because they're afraid of owls I like the idea of a, a whole a whole village of pixies thinking they're the only person living there, but they keep thinking people come into their village and steal their shit because they because <laughs> they don't realize that there's like forty other people living in the same area doing the same shit. If they're everywhere, like this is this is a problem. <laughs> These are a problem creature. The other option is to put them in the Feywild. Then you get that weird excuse of like, no, no, no. Once you're in the Feywild, the animals know they're fey. Like, it's not necessarily that the animals are any smarter, but the animals also know the court's rules. They're not fucking with the Fae. It's the Lion King idea that all the animals can speak to each other and have, like, a general understanding of the rules, even though some of them eat the other ones. They're all just like, well, that's just how it happens. That's just how it is. Usually the predators are telling you that's just how it is, and that's the circle of life. It's very rarely the deer talking to the other deer going, well, sometimes we can eat, and that's just how it is to me. Yeah, the Lion King was really priming people for capitalism. <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of people who use our bodies for their benefit. It's fine. They're kind of noble kings. They're better than we are. Thank you for eating me, Elon. (laughs) The last thing I want to mention just in terms of pixie society is like they have that opposition to violence, but also like every pixie thinks it's a prince and there's no reference to any sort of structure. There aren't like pixie cobblers like there there's implicitly like a pixie tailor somewhere what do these things eat like are there pixie farmers like this is part of why they only work in the Feywild. i've actually read about this they eat what we eat but they add a bunch of spices and stuff that is really toxic to people it's great for them but it's like all the poisonous stuff we can't eat they can eat where did you read this <laughs> I am outside of D&D lore now. I am just talking about pixie lore in general. Okay, so now you're talking about pixies like Cornwall and shit. I do love the idea that they would have like a perfect cupcake and then put like a slug on it or something like that people just would not eat, but to them is perfectly natural. I was thinking like a good berry situation. Like, do they have the capability for the good berries to exist in their society? And then, you know, you just pop one of those bad boys in your mouth and then you're good for a day from memory? And then standard disclaimer, the thing we always have to point out is like, you go to the UK and pixies have like a thousand backstories. That could just tie into the fact that every single little group of pixies says it's a court or a royalty, invents their own ridiculous backstory, and that just feeds its way into the people. Absolutely. How many courts does England have, you know? The UK is currently what, like four countries and then also the bit of Ireland that isn't part of the UK? True, yeah, yeah. It sort of makes sense, but it's also like, this is one of the times where D&D took something that has a name, that has a backstory to it. There is a whole bunch of folklore that could be really, really cool. And instead they said, what if Tinkerbell was a character? Which I support, but that's what they did, yeah. Right down to the fact that pixie dust is believed to make you fly. Oh. Sounds like Peter Pan, right? Yeah, exactly. I maintain that that should be true, and then you've just fluffed it by giving them the once-a-day fly spell. But, like, effectively, that's what that is. The once-a-day fly spell is so they can make others fly. Exactly, because they can. Uh, so that's pixie dust. But their pixie dust can also make people fly. So maybe they're like, if you can you only shake them once and then they're out of dust until they regrow dust tomorrow? Is dust like just skin flakes? Is that what this is? It's pixie sweat. <laughs> is it dust at that point or is it a light shower then? 
they sweat a little bit, it dries off, and now it's like this weird little pixie salt. Oh, uh, so it's like crystalline. Oh, really good on popcorn. Yeah. It's very light. Delicious, delicious pixies. Lightly salted, slightly sweet. <laughs> Matt, is the pixie a monster? I would say probably no in this case. And if you do, you know, there are methods at which you could easily dispose of a large quantity of them. See, fireball. Which is still overkill because burning hands covers like maybe only a quarter of the area, but still like... If I'm going for the kill, we're going for the widespread murder. They can turn invisible. Make sure you hit them. (laughs) Exactly. You would also leave no trace whatsoever. Like there would be no evidence left if you fireballed a group of pixies. Half damage on a fail? It doesn't matter. Minimum damage. Still eight. Pixies are just talking magic items. They exist so that the players can befriend them, and you have to befriend them instead of loot them. But once you're friends with a pixie, you you know it travels around with you for the next little area, and it's like, oh, can you cast Polymorph on this? Can you hit this room full of goblins with a uh, sleep? You want to entangle this for me? Like a spell dispensary. Yeah, I kind of love that. Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, it is just a good familiar. It's what a familiar should be. Pixies are one of the ones you can summon. With a flock of familiars, you can summon pixies. And and if you do that, you can then summon a bunch of pixies who can then all polymorph. Yep, and there's also summon Feywild or Woodland Spirits or something. Same deal. Which they can summon more pixies. You can summon like 16 of them. also then summon more pixies. (laughs) Pixies can't summon pixies. They don't have that spell around. (laughs) They do. They're like little demons. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, the little de- the, I was actually going to bring up the Bulger and things can infinitely summon themselves, yeah. uh, you know, based on a good dice roll. Look at their stat block. I, they don't have a method to summon themselves, though. No, they no. don't. And, you know, unless they, you know, let's say you have like a, a homebrew thing where they cry out and then it'll, like a wasp nest, they'll just summon other ones somehow. <laughs> they just come streaming out of holes. That's something you give to sprites. This is a time where they should have an ecology to the Fae. There should have been a Fae section that included hags and pixies and sprites, and that way they can have a thing where they just call out, yeah, no, a pixie is basically a honeybee. It flies around, it's friendly, it likes flowers, it just wants to make honey and everyone be happy. And sprites want to do their shit. They are wasps. If you come near them, they'll stab you repeatedly. If you kill one sprite, more sprites come. How would you change the pixie in Dungeons and Dragons? Honestly, I would maybe give them like just five health instead of one. Because if if people do want to start fighting these things at level one, you know, give them a tiny bit more survivability. I really liked the changes to the dexterity or the evasion stuff, like having the flutter fly type ability to make them kind of harder to hit. But you don't want to fall into quickling territory. If, if there's been a quickling episode, then oh my God. Oh, we'll talk quicklings later because those are... There's one of those is a TPK for level ones. That's too hard. Like something not akin to a clickling, but like, you know, very, very evasive kind of creatures that the DM will, you know, in their nature, it says pixies don't really want to fight. So giving them the tools to buff or debuff themselves or the others uh, to either make an escape or... This is the contrast to quicklings. Where you can get away with it in pixies is that A pixie does not have any aggressive actions it can take. No murder. Confusion might cause you to kill your party, hypothetically, but they have no damage dealing abilities. So if you if you give them an 18 AC and then give everyone disadvantage, that just means they can make fun of you, which is great. I mean, the end of the day, it's like, how much do you want to fight a pixie? If a party is gunning for pixie blood, they're the monsters. And, you know, you can flip it. You can flip the podcast to, you know, just make it a a player grinder dungeon. That's the thing I would do with pixies, with unicorns, with a couple of these things, where you just take them out of the main body of the monster manual and you put them in the back where it's like, these are explicitly NPC monsters. They are helpful. They will give you buffs. They will be your friends. And they have stats because you might like woodland creatures. If you have a group of pixies that notice a uh, a tree spawning blights in the middle of the woods. Suddenly you have like 
a bunch of well, they can't handle it they can't deal damage well they can turn into things that can deal damage polymorph is limited to the cr of the creature so they can turn into other one four challenge rating creatures. so they can deal a little bit of damage all right so let's see um i think they could be a panther they can be an axe beak oh that's that's pretty pretty handy an axe beak is mean I would not want to fight an Axe Beak. An Axe Beak would kill me as a person. No, an Axe Beak is an Australian creature. That thing's a cassowary. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cassowary. I, I lived near those. My dad chased, got chased by one. I had to lasso an emo me once. That's a fucking separate story, but it's just a thing that I like to say because it doesn't feel like it's real, even though I know it's true. <laughs> I did not have to do either of these things because I grew up in a civilization. Aram, I'm going to have you run the intro to this adventure with the little briefing because you love your pixie bullshit and I feel like that'll be more fun for you. I do love my pixie bullshit. That should be on my business card. Once they're on the mission and the game is about trying to murder people, I will take over again. Understood. I only want to see pain. Explain it and then shut the fuck up. Yes. (laughs) So, you all are members of Pearl, the Pixie Extraction and Recovery Legion assigned to a three Pixie squad. This group was started because Pixies get captured. They get taken by unscrupulous wizards or mischievous children or asshole rich people who want to put them in a cage like a bird. They just get taken all the time. And this was their way of saying, enough is enough. We have to protect our own. Three days ago, a crow named Nightfall came to the Pixies because he saw a wizard named Ramir capture one. He was looking to sneak into the wizard's cab, but he's pulled this a couple times before. If he can get in and get out, he can always get a good trinket or two. And crows do love a shiny trinket. This time, however, he saw the elven wizard coming back with a cage. And inside that cage was an unconscious Pixie. He went into his cabin, Nightfall did Nightfall's thing, but eventually got around to telling us that there was a problem. Once that was heard, the three of you were notified to come into Pixie headquarters. How did you all meet each other? All right, I met Fubsy when we were back in training, and I figured, you know, he's a bit of a smart lad. We'll get him going in the squad. Don't know the other guy, though. I met Honey Star when we were bird watching in the north. We were defending the line for the fairies, and we had to do many dark things. The battle was tough when it started, and you, you know, you fought hard, but then the hawk showed up, and once a hawk is in play, there aren't rules anymore. You do what you have to to survive, and no one can blame you for what happened. All is fair in love and war. Pixies have one hit point. If a beetle shows up, it's a deadly encounter. Every moment I see on that battlefield could be my last. Every moment with a light wind could be your last. Fubsy and I met in the high north, fighting off other pixie rebellions and folk like. He saved my life and now I owe him mine. What was the cause of the great pixie rebellion? Not enough nuts to go around. <laughs> <laughs> no, Aram, it's not pixie bullshit. It's standard dark famine shit. I'll tell you what, anytime fairies fight, it's because there's not enough nuts to go around. So that's accurate. I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? Your team has been called to Pearl Headquarters, which is this old hollowed out tree, about five stories tall. And each level is a new level of pixie research and development. The main level has a nice little entry with little pixie statues all along the wall. And then instead of a staircase, there's just a hollow hole through the floor. Just you can just fly right up it. There's little gilded balconies on all of them. But today you have a meeting with Commander Tiptoe at the very top of Pearl HQ. We got orders from the top, must be a big job. 
Even though you're pixies and can just fly to the top, I imagine you go in through the entryway anyway, because, you know. I walk out of respect for me job. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a elder pixie uh, at the reception desk um, as you walk in. Name? Fubsy Forrester. Mm-hmm. And you're here for? We have a meeting with Tiptoe at the top. Oh, fancy. All right. Well, she stamps all your badges, and then she hands you all a little piece of candy. Go on. Much obliged, ma'am. Is there any orange in this? No, there's no orange. Well, hang on. No, hang on. It's here. Here's a peppermint. You take that one. Oh, excellent. The joys of peppermints. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we fight. (laughs) Each of them says that. It just says, this is why we fight in cursive, (laughs) in little gold cursive on everyone. It's just all, it's all cute, (laughs) see? So you guys fly up to the top. Each of the levels has like various little desks and little comfortable pillow areas where pixies are reading or filling out reports. There's pixies flying up and down this corridor. It's a literal beehive of activity. You get to the very top, and Commander Tiptoe is standing there waiting. She's leaning against her desk. She has several folders out, and when she sees you arrive, she snaps it shut, places it on the desk behind her, leans back. Greetings, Pixies. Thank you for answering the call. Gestures to a couple little mounds of pillows in front of her desk. Thank you, love. And then I go, I just go slump on a pillow. Very softly, though. Yeah, they're very comfortable. I tip my hat in a Western way. Not in a, a fedora way? Yeah, in a Western way. And what's a Western way, Benji? You just spit. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> I spit peppermint tobacco out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I get a musk stick and kind of put it in my mouth like a cigarette. I'm like, what's the job? Before we get started... This is a pinky swear level meeting. And then Tiptoe flies over to each of you one by one. Pinky swear. Pinky swear. Pinky swear. On my life. Now that we are sworn in, here is the... And then goes and proceeds to tell you all about how this one pixie was captured. It's a pixie that's very, very important to Commander Tiptoe. Can't tell you why, but we need this pixie back. A high value target. High value, and then she like looks on her on her desk and her finger kind of brushes one of the little photos she has on her desk. It's clearly her sister, right? But then she straightens back up. Yes, a very high value target that is important to Pixie Kind. What sort of threats are we facing? He's an elf from Candlekeep. He and the other scribes are curious. Most of them just take notes on us. This one it seems to have taken us. We need us back. And so it shall be done as the sacred bond of the pinky swear has been formed. You have our word. As per usual, you will be outfitted with your usual gear. And she hands you each, like, with one of these little little wooden pearl badges. They're these little pink painted wood badges with a little a little pearl in the middle, and it says pearl on the petals. These badges allow you to communicate to each other. If you tap them and talk aloud, they will talk to any other pixie within a mile. So you can always be in communication with each other. They also have the effect of a brooch of shielding. Oh. Which most importantly means that you cannot all be wiped out with magic missile at just the wave of a hand. (laughs) Otherwise, this would be a very short encounter with any wizard. (laughs) Before they had invented the brooch of shielding, they had to send you out in four-person units, <laughs> specifically because a first-level spell slot leaves a survivor. My pearl badge is telling me there are hot singles in my area. <laughs> <laughs> it also does that, yes. Yes, it does. You are then presented with some documentation, including a map. The crow described the room the best they could, and your artists have... We have redrawn it here. You see a simple cabin. All the rooms are fairly well detailed except for one. And that's where he believes the wizard's lab is and probably where the pixie's being held. What did you all pick, by the way? What are the different specialties for your pixies? 
I'm a sniper class. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna go stealthy and stab with silver dagger. I uh, guess I'll go safe cracker. Does that mean we don't have a medic? That means you don't have a medic. Oh shit. <laughs> we don't need a medic. You all have one good berry. We're the elite. <laughs> We all die someday. Today might just be that day. Keep the positivity. And because you are the protagonist, you do have death saves. We will not be using massive damage rules, despite the fact that I think it'd be funny. Can we swear? Do pixies swear? Pixies curse, but they all giggle as soon as they curse. What a manky c- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fucking awful. That is fudged. <laughs> <laughs> I love this character. So, Commander Tiptoe would turn to you all after presenting this information and say, Is there anything else you all need to know? How much collateral damage? As much as you wish. We have no love for this wizard, but we do believe he's dangerous. So, avoiding him would probably be for the best. Are we talking about like leaving squirrels in his bed? As like a present? Sure, I mean, that seems nice, but really he's a dangerous wizard. No, I'm thinking like dastardly shit. Oh, oh, leave him a message, yeah. You know, those kind of squirrels. Give the squirrels a piece of paper and have them hand it over. Yeah, like a strongly worded letter. I'm on board with this. Tell him he's a bad man. Well, you know, maybe, maybe no one ever has. Maybe someone just needs to let him know. But I would say probably avoid him because he has been known to kill small things frequently. Let's poison his food. <laughs> okay, that's a way, sure. With love. <laughs> Let's kill his cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everyone's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. No. Also, as far as we know, it does not have a cat. However, it does have a pseudo dragon familiar. He's got a captive dragon. I will avoid that. <laughs> He's got a little captive dragon man. Well, to I mean, little relatively. To you, it's a fairly, it's a bus sized dragon. All right, fellas, we got a bit of a secondary mission. He's got a dragon there. Out of curiosity, just for my benefit, what is the mission implied by the existence of a dragon? Because I literally have no idea where you're taking this. <laughs> it's a fey dragon. He belongs in the wild. Okay, okay, cool. Well, the other dragon. No, I don't want to fight that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> then Commander Tiptoe would look to each of you, nod. Good luck, Pixies. May Titania's light guide you all. What do your Pixies all look like? I've got like flared out pink and yellow Goku hair. Yeah, I'm wearing like little bark armor. Do you look like Vegeta? Are you just pink Vegeta? No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm, yeah. Pink Vegeta with wigs. It's willow bark, so it's also white armor. I've got a completely buzz cut head, and you can see like a little bit of growth back, like I haven't shaved it in maybe a day or two. Uh, and I've got like rainbow, like almost like a um, stained glass window of wings. You're the only pixie with male pattern baldness. Oh no, it's intentional. I did this. Oh. I did this. <laughs> that's what he tells everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he tells everyone. <laughs> you know, I shaved this the other day. Yeah, we all know. I've got like this, this, it's like a mint green and salmon kind of uh, lock picking kit kind of sewn into my whatever armor I'm wearing. Honey Star has a, a duster jacket that's sleeveless <laughs> and um, a, a cowboy's hat and um, this big, bright pink beard. The amount of dedication that goes on into putting on a duster while you have wings is astonishing. I'm picturing a little crop top duster jacket as well. Yeah, yeah, it's got like a little bit Cut of belly showing. Section. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, he's got like a bear, like a bear tummy. It's like nice, nice pink hair as well. I want to say, like, I've got short shorts on and, like, boots that come up to my knees so you can see some thigh. Oh, that's hot. But he's got real buff legs, just the legs, though. His arms are, like, he's, he's more weedy in the arms. A man built for kicking. I'm built for kicking and picking locks and nothing else. <laughs> uh, Dylan, I'm done then. It is getting dark by the time you arrive. Some of the intel from Nightfall was uh, that... 
Remmer should be going on vacation. And you happen to arrive at the edge of the clearing, basically in time to see him wander out. He mutters a couple words in Elvish. Marathon, Drakri. Which one of you do you think is the cleverest? Yeah, it's got to be our resident veteran. Yeah, it's got to be Fuzzbuzzle. He's seen some shit. <laughs> All right. Fubsy, Elvin has the same roots as Sylvan, so you, like, catch a little bit of it. He mutters the Elvin word for leave on his way out the door, and immediately all the windows shut. There's, like, a bit of smoke coming out of the cabin, and it immediately goes from, like, that active sort of white puff of a fire going to just sort of smoldering embers, that light, wispy smoke. You see him look over at some rose bushes, squint a little bit. He gestures his hand, and immediately you see a squirrel lifted as if force-choked, but tiny. And then he just swings his arm, the telekinetic force just throws the squirrel into the woods. You hear a thunk a little ways in. It takes a lot of force to make a squirrel go thunk. Just kind of looks with some resentment, shakes his hand off, gestures, a portal opens, and Remmer leaves on vacation. This is one sick fudge. <laughs> I assume, and you guys can correct me as you see fit, that you travel under invisibility. You guys have a free, like, you can just turn invisible at will. So you are invisible. You are at the edge of this clearing, maybe like 50 feet out from the house. There's a well out front that you can see uh, that wasn't on the crow's map, but also it was drawn by a crow. So, I mean, hard to fault them. Did great. Uh, just to sort of the uh, the south, uh, which direction is this? Southwest of the house is like this little, looks like an apple tree. It's not the season for it. It doesn't have apples on it, but you fuckers know your tree, so you know it's an apple tree with some nice little rose bushes around a bench. It seems like a nice, relaxing place to sit and read. How do you want to proceed? We could use our wings. Fly up. Get down that chimney. Is that going to get a scene? We're invisible. Wait, where are you? <laughs> oh, you're right. But what if they could see us? Marco. <laughs> Problem is, I'm seeing with this strategy already. Is that your face? Oh. Oh, it's me nose. I wasn't reaching high. No, I've got a big schnoz if you never saw earlier. <laughs> Team of pixies all holding hands in the woods while invisible so that they know where everyone is. <laughs> I have an idea. Perhaps if we all paint ourselves, then we can see each other when we're invisible. That is the smartest idea. You're a genius. This is why you're the veteran. And Fubsy reaches down into the mud and just like brushes mud all over him. So you can see this mud outline. I do the same thing but with my hat. So you see my hat covered in mud. That's about it. Can I stick like I don't want to I don't want to consume the good berry, but can I stick my finger in it to get like some some like maroon out and just like cover my body in the maroon? So we have a floating hat, a roughly hewn neon outline of a fairy, and just sort of a maroon floating berry juice puddle. Genius. No, never suspect a thing. It would be dangerous in case we accidentally attacked each other. Now we are all safe. Safety first. Safety first. Now we must make our way through the fireplace. <laughs> Is it lit? <laughs> First, before you can answer that question, the moment you enter the clearing, this entire conversation becomes moot because an anti-magic field procs. <laughs> <laughs> well, an anti-invisibility field, at least. Yes. Uh, it's a targeted effect. It oh, specifically fuck. kills your invisibility. <laughs> so immediately, you are visible <laughs> and filthy. <laughs> When you get over to the roof, you can see that the chimney is still getting like a little bit of smoke out. It is embers. The fire just went out. You could go down there. It will be a little bit rough. It's also going to be a bit of an achievement because you're going to have to dive down there, pull your wings in because those bricks still have all the heat of the recent fire. And like it's, it's going to be a bit of an acrobatic maneuver. So 
It's an option. It's just a slightly dangerous option. Is there a keyhole on the door? The door is magically locked. There is a keyhole, and you can kind of tell that the magic is sort of localized there. You're fairly certain that there is a regular-ass key somewhere. Check under the doormat. And I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll look under a doormat. I'll help him lift up the mat. That's fucking huge. Yeah, the two of you are lifting it up in the last one because you can't lift it that high. It's very heavy. Has to, like, crawl on their stomach to get under. There's absolutely a key under the doormat. Just like you said, that's why you're the vet. It's attached to a wooden tag that says Ramirez Cabin. Like, it's the worst security possible. What a tactical genius he is. Give me a strength check, whoever is trying to unlock the door. Uh, so I rolled a five, uh, negative four. It takes, like, a concerted effort. You are, like fluttering trying to get it up you wind up like sitting down taking the key ring having to like pry it apart and get the little like wooden block off the end to get the weight down and then you can get it up finally just like getting it in and then just flying back you get a good foot of lead up then you fly in and drop kick the top of the key with just enough force to get it to click to the side He's doing both the things I'm good at. I'm so proud of him. I taught him well. Except the veteran, he's a bit, he's actually older than me. You should see him do his paper mache. It's actually quite good. I love origami. I saw him make an elephant. It was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> None of you have seen an elephant. It does not look anything like an elephant. It's a giraffe. <laughs> With a trunk. <laughs> <laughs> the key, when it clicks over to the side... There is a little bit of a flash to it. You can all feel the magic sort of dissipate from the door. The door is unlocked. You've defeated my door puzzle. It's a Rom's door puzzle. He wrote this one. You changed it. You changed my door puzzle. I did because your door puzzle's too hard, especially for three dumb pixies. <laughs> and this is funnier. I'm going to make the wild assumption that you open the door. Uh, let's go through the chimney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Let's go through the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they would be expecting. Fellas, I know doors, that clicking sound. Definitely, you broke the lock. It's got to be a trap, for sure. Let's go through the chimney. <laughs> We're not going to save this fucking pixie. <laughs> Never give us the option to do something stupid. <laughs> this is going to be one... Like, you guys have to go down one at a time, because this is dangerous. I want you to make an acrobatics check. The DC is going to be 10. We should make this a skills check. Each of them picks a different skill, tells us how they go down and why they picked that skill. Okay. With my daring charisma, I will start singing in the walls and use the reverberation to guard myself down. <laughs> That's some serious pixie bullshit. I want you to make me a charisma check to try to echo locate down the chimney. Can do. Which I will point out is a well-lit and straight tube. I'm a songbird of my generation. I got a 16. Old Town River. This isn't singing. This is a high-frequency noise so that he can echolocate. Don't be a jackass, Matt. <laughs> You're clearly the one being absurd in this circumstance. He's just saying yeehaw over again. <laughs> one super high-pitched yeehaw. Quite frankly, uh, if I were to give you any consequence for this choice, it would immediately kill you, which leads me to let a 16 succeed. And I want you to know that I resent it. <laughs> Are we still in an anti-magic field? The anti-invisibility thing is outside the cabin. It is a protective thing. So once you're in the chimney at all, once you're inside the cabin in any way, shape or form, you can pop your invisibility again. Do I make it down to the bottom? Absolutely, because, again, I, I don't want to punish you with fucking death. So I'm gonna, we're just going to let this slide. So you get down, and it is a floating hat coming out of this high-pitched shriek down the chimney. I tap my pearl badge to radio up to the other two. This is uh, Anissa Amin. Come on down. Stay toasty. <laughs> this is Dingleberry, what you see down there. What you see is the wizard's study. 
You can see uh, the paper bindings, which were in fact books. A huge wingback chair sitting in front of this fireplace where, like I said, this fire went out when you entered the clearing. So it's still like smoldering. There's still some red embers to it. Uh, There is a table with a book right at the side of the uh, chair. And sitting on top of the bookshelf is a bone white pseudo dragon. (laughs) The scales legitimately look as if you took bone and just flaked it. (laughs) It sort of rolls onto its side and you can see just a bright yellow underbelly. There's also a piano. There's also a piano, yes. I forgot to mention the piano. The piano is very important. They've got a desk, they've got a chair, they've got a couple of embers in this fireplace. Uh, oh, and mission point number two is down here. The dragon. Oh, fuck. He looks, he looks like he has been put down in a, in a, in a very oppressive way. <laughs> and we, and we, need, we need to unoppress him. Fucking bastards, a lot of them. <laughs> Come on down to Pottertown. Over there. The extraction is a go. And then I, I like cross my arms around my ch- over my chest and like fall backwards, dive down the, the chimney. Okay, we're going to call that a dexterity acrobatics. I don't believe you guys have acrobatics as a skill, but if you do, you can add that as well. That's a natural one. <laughs> when I see him just dive headfirst down there, can I go fucking madman? And then I realize he hasn't, like, done anything yet. Can I cast Entangle on the bottom of the fireplace using some house plants, maybe that are in the in the next room? If you want to burn the spell, you can. I will try to burn the spell, yeah. If, if, you, if it fails, it fails. I've said it. You're spending a resource. I'm just going to give you the success on this one is you immediately see, like, that this is going to go wrong. And from the little gaps between the bricks at the bottom of the the fireplace you get these roots clearly the the trees and everything going under the house you just grab them and pull them up and they wrap over the uh the ashes and just sort of pull down a little bit when fubsy gets to the bottom there is a light noise as he hits it but it becomes a bounce rather than a sear works every time you roll out the bottom and are just sitting there covered in war paint, staring up at this sleeping dragon, who immediately starts to stir a little bit. I'm going to give you an opportunity to roll a stealth check to get out of line of sight. That's going to be your punishment for the nat one. I can't kill you, but I can put you in danger. Uh, 25. You know what pixies have down pat? Scatter. And you just scramble along the ground under the chair. I quickly make the shape of a teacup that's sitting under the chair that's fallen over. You do. I'm a little teapot, except I'm a little teacup. And you just hide under the chair like that. That's perfect. Quietly whispering it. I'm a little teacup. I'm a little teacup. I'm a little teacup. I'm a little teacup. DB, you're up top. What do you want to do? Um, I look down at that thing. I'm like, he's a fucking genius. And, uh, uh, And even though, like, you know, even though I saved him, I still think that's his doing. He's got a real good handle on the situation. Like he's acting through me. I want to like slide down the side of the of the chimney, like you know, like very roguishly, and kind of like jump onto the thing, like trampolining off it. Maybe do like a little bit of a flip and then land in like a hero pose, like Black Widow. Honestly, you've kind of uh, taken out the threat at the bottom, so we can just give you that. Yeah, you could just jump. Yeah. We. Yeah. All right. We. Boing. <laughs> and I just like I land in like a really cool pose and they go <laughs> and you giggle at the bottom is that what you're sticking with yeah is that how you're doing this yep cool so you get down and there is a wee boing <laughs> and immediately this like lightly stirring dragon transitions to just what the fuck it doesn't giggle after it swears yes exactly it's a mean dragon and it just kind of like gets up like a cat. Its whole back arches and its scales just kind of lift up and point. Who the fuck are you? Immediately visible to the dragon, there is a floating hat and there is a maroon pixie shape. You should be back in the lab. Get back in the lab. 
oh, I'm not what you think I am. I'm not what you think I am. Of course. Because I know pixies love introducing themselves as well. I'm not what you think I am. I'm not actually made of juice. And he would just sigh. Fucking pixies. Puts his little dragon head down, looks up at you. Look, get in the fucking lab or I'm going to roast you. You've been oppressed for far too long. He's been, he's, he's got Stockholm Syndrome. I knew it settled in already. Real quick, uh, I would like all of you to make an arcana or a nature check. Your call. Nature's wisdom. <laughs> I'll do arcana <laughs> as the most intelligent of our group. I've got a, te- a 12. I got a 9 for nature. 13 for arcana. As it would happen, 12 was the DC I had set. So the uh, the only pixie who has not been observed in any way as of yet is under there going, it can't roast anyone. Pseudo dragons don't breathe fire. I, I touch my pearl badge and I tell the others. It has no flame. Does that now, like, does that come out? Like, does the pseudo dragon hear that? <laughs> and the feedback's like, ee! He said it out loud, and then you also hear it go off and the feedback, yes. Which for a 25, you can you're you can absolutely get this out and remain hidden, and that's why you remain hidden. The feedback is enough that the noise is like you can't pinpoint it. Doesn't know where that came from. I look down at my badge, I look up, I'm like, you couldn't roast a potato, mate. Once he realizes that there's more than two of you, like he's about to answer and say something snarky back, but he sees that there's two of you, he's like, wait, that's not right and he's going to then engage. So I think he would go into a fight and we should roll for initiative. Okay, so Matt, you got an 18. Benji, what'd you get? A 17. Okay, uh, George. 23. Aram? I got a 12. George, you're currently safe. Flubsy is under the chair and you hear the sounds of a rapid movement from where you know the dragon was coming from. You're a soldier, you know these sorts of sounds. That sounded like a pounce. What do you want to do? I would like to cast dancing lights and have them spin around me in a Sailor Moon style as I burst <laughs> out with my, with my dagger in both hands. <laughs> Okay, now strictly speaking, that should be, but your action would be casting Dancing Lights. But fuck that, rules are stupid, Uh, so you can make an attack if you want. (laughs) The Dancing Lights are purely an aesthetic motion. (laughs) Yep, uh, well that would be a nine. A nine is not quite enough. You come out, big glowy shape that you are, to this dragon in mid-pounce, lunging towards DB. It sees you and the wings just flare out and its fall kind of stops in midair and your lunge just goes under it. You land sort of on the opposite side of the dragon as it's sort of hovering just above you. And I whisper into its ear, the next one will be your throat. As a bead of sweat drips down the side of my head. Smearing the paint as it goes. Oh, Fubsy, you mad man. Uh, I kind of I look at them. I look at the dragon, and I'm like, what are we doing with this? Are we bringing him in, or is he too far gone? No, no one is too far gone. We must save the oppressed. All right, I stick out my hand, and you see like a, a you know, like a fractal rainbow kind of come out, uh, and it grips onto the pseudo dragon. I want to cast Polymorph. Oh, I was going to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. <laughs> A dragon is challenge one quarter, so you can turn it into anything with a challenge of one quarter or lower, assuming it fails a wisdom save? Yeah. Wisdom save. It's wisdom uh, save, yeah. yeah. wisdom save. I have a plus one on wisdom saving throws, and I rolled a three, so that would be a fail. What are you turning this thing into? A little moth or like a larval, like a little, like a cute little caterpillar. Do you want the fuzzy one or do you want like a colorful one? I mean, fuzzy ones for me are the ones that hurt you, but uh, if it's fuzzy and cute and non-harming, yeah. We're going to go with like a monarch uh, caterpillar. They're like little black and white and orange cute things. I should be all white with like a blue stripe. Hey, are you casting polymorph? Shut the fuck up. Okay, okay. (laughs) We have guests here, dickbag. (laughs) 
I was thinking I want I want the kind of cute caterpillar that you don't know if it's going to turn into a moth or a butterfly. I don't mind what it color looks like. So blue stripe is fine. You can have your way on the color. <laughs> so it transforms, just drops the last like foot and a half to the ground, cursing the whole way. Fuck, 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 fuck. The whole time I'm All like- All three of us are going- <laughs> <laughs> um, I pick it up. So angry. I just want to put it in a little, a little, my backpack or satchel, you know. Wait, hold on. A caterpillar would be pretty big for us, right? Both hands. Tiny size category is like a foot tall. It's like holding a weasel. Small cat. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put it in my backpack, but I want the caterpillar's head to like stick out so we can see the adventure we're on. <laughs> You just cinch up the thing so that it's like legs get stuck, can't quite get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a full hour, but it is concentration. So if you go invisible, your invisibility counts as a concentration effect and it will pop that uh, pseudo dragon. That is fine. I will drop my invisibility for that. So I'm just a man covered in, in berry juice. Aram, I'm going to let you make a strength check to try to escape the backpack. So you want to make that roll real quick? Okay. I rolled a three again. You fail. You're a caterpillar. I don't care what you rolled. <laughs> hey, can someone cast sleep on this wiggly bastard? <laughs> no, he needs to see the destruction his master causes. I have my mental stuff, right? Like, I still think like a pseudo dragon. Uh, men mental ability scores are replaced by the statistics of the chosen beast. It retains its alignment and personality. Yeah, so you're a piece of shit caterpillar, but you're absolutely <laughs> a caterpillar right now. So I'm just mad. Like, it's hard. If you could look at a caterpillar and read pissed the fuck off, this is a pissed off squirmy caterpillar. <laughs> it is releasing excretions. He's wiggling like a madman. You effectively have a mad kitten in your back. <laughs> is that it? Do we leave now? That's, that's mission number two. There is another. Oh, right, yeah. From here, there is a door off, two doors off to the south. You figure one of them is to an entry hallway. The other one is, based on the map, to the food ritual chamber. Uh, there's another door to the south that should lead to the wizard's quarters. You know that the lab should be off the entry hallway. I would like to cast Detect Evil and Good to detect Fang within 30 feet. Uh, you immediately detect uh, the evil of the caterpillar. It's a very resentful caterpillar. It's it's angry as shit. It's a mean, angry caterpillar. If it were poisonous, it would bite you. Yeah. It's not poisonous and it would still bite you, but it wouldn't matter. You can see almost out into the woods around for the most part. And you're mostly alone. Like there's the little signatures of life, the things that are moving around. That room just off the side of the entry hallway fucking pitch black the walls are thick enough that you cannot see any signals coming from that room I detect not anything through those walls so it can't be there I believe that there will be secrets that reside that's not how buildings work and I know buildings and trees but I'll follow your lead Fubs Wubbsy all right, so you head into the uh, entry hallway? I do, with a uh, massive two-handed dagger <laughs> in hand. I cock my, my crossbow. I pull out my lock kit. It is, of course, just the entry hallway, so you can see the uh, door at the far end, the actual entryway, uh, with the little lock latch in the unlocked position. There is a door to the north leading into the kitchen. There's a door to the south leading into God only knows what. What's that one at the end of the hallway? You know, everything's always got, you know, you, you, you one end to the other end. I feel like we should go through that one directly opposite us. You know, the longest road's always the one that has the most payoff. Yeah, is that a Beatles song? It's an actual band of just different Beatles. Fucking eight Beatles. They're not my, they're not my taste. Do <laughs> Now you're just laughing. There's no swear in there. No, I swore, I swore in the middle there. I swore in the middle. Oh, tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> Lead the way, Fubs Wubsy. I would like to head towards that uh, big dark laboratory room. You go over, and same sort of thing as before. You can tell basically this is, this is definitely where you want to be because 
this is the moment you push on it there is a physical lock but even before you see that like you can see the the keyhole and you push and before that little jangle that indicator that like you've hit the latch the door stops hard there is nothing visible stopping it there is a full-blown spell holding this door in place can i talk to you guys as the worm am i can i communicate as the cat up pillar Let's leave you your limited telepathy because then you can be a piece of shit. You guys should just leave now. Just fucking leave now. Nothing's gonna happen to you. Oh shit, you can talk. I can talk the whole time. Put me back, turn me back, turn around now. Or you're gonna regret it. Hey, what's your name? First of all, first of all, I could have just roasted y'all. No, he couldn't. Could have roasted you with my fire breath. As a dragon, I have that. Doesn't. Yes, I could. Appreciate that the dragon's talking to the fucking narrator now. I can break the fourth wall. <laughs> Appreciate that you let me live, but this is breaking and entering, assault, kidnapping, unlawful use of magics. You leave now, we can let this all slide. I am the law, and the law says your master's a dickhead, tee hee. <laughs> He's a jerk, fine, whatever, but like, He's also a big scary wizard. He'll be home soon. If you go in that room, you know what? That's fine. Just go in the room. Could someone shove a peppermint in his damn mouth? Tee <laughs> You've been oppressed for far too long, Kiev. <laughs> As you shove a peppermint in his mouth. You got telepathy, so it doesn't matter. I can still fucking talk, you assholes. It doesn't stop me at all. Boy, you are dumb. How did you get this far? I could fashion an origami gag. He's got another mouth somewhere. I know he keeps talking. I will cast Dispel Magic on the door. I assume that this was just like an arcane lock or something, so that's first level. That just goes off. You reach out, and basically, with a little bit of concentration, you can gather up all the threads of magic into one little bundle, and then you just sort of twist, and it snaps almost like dry pasta. Just shatters in a couple of directions, and then it just immediately starts to dissipate. And now it's just a locked door. Safe cracker, do your safe cracking. I'll flitter up and say to the pseudo dragon, all right, this is how you actually get work done. I do lots of things around here. I do the majority of the cleaning. And can I do my lockpick? Yeah, absolutely. I do the cooking. I write all the lists for the shops. I mean, I do a lot around here. I got 10. This is a booby-trapped lock. There is a secondary spell to it. And the moment you get it, you find the little latch and you realize the moment you feel the pin kind of hit home, there was something you missed and you feel just like a pulse it's just the energy you don't know what it is but you feel energy go out through the room the door is unlocked hey lads uh something's up in here I felt like a like a blip as they unlock that. Like the same in the Marvel Universe? Yeah, half the population is dead now. It's your fault. I think we're going to have to make some apologies to some pixies after this. Kiev leans in, his little caterpillar head kind of leaning over your shoulder as his little mandibles just brush against your ear. You're fucked now, pixies. He's like a devil on me shoulder. Inside this little research room, there's a tall cherry desk. It's got one of those covers that sort of rolls back. It's currently open and unfolded across it is uh, from where you're floating. You can see like a rough map. You can't quite make out what it's a map of. You have to go over to investigate to get that sort of information. I'm not just going to give you everything. There is a journal also on the desk with like a magnifying glass sitting on top of it. Possibly most pressing, however, is bolted to the wall with like a brass ring. Picture one of those little viewports on like a submarine with like the globe sticking out of it. Ye old submarine. 20,000 leagues under the sea submarine. There's this globe sticking out of the wall. Inside of it, it's maybe five feet wide and there is like a terrarium. Branches, small trees, dirt, and like a nice small cushion sitting on which is a single pixie. What does that pixie look like? Rom, what's the pixie look like? 
Looks like a younger version of Commander Tiptoe. Ah, yes. A little less stern, a little less tired. Not quite as buff. Do not panic, for we are here to rescue you. Ma'am? She doesn't respond. She doesn't seem to hear you or see you. She's just sitting there with her little feet swinging back and forth and her little wings sagging. Just... (sighs) With Fumble Bumble. Can I cast Detect Thoughts? Uh, You can. For the record, I am also going to start a timer right now. So yeah, you cast Detect Thoughts. I'm so sad. I wish I wasn't in here. I wish I was anywhere else but this place. I wish I could see out. (laughs) Okay, she's exactly sad as we thought. Yeah, she wants to be where the people are. She wants to see the people dancing. Oh, I do wish I could dance again. I'm gonna die in here. (laughs) Just like the others. Mother always told me I'd die this way. I guess she was right. Oh, it's getting dark. She's going into trauma. I never even had my first kiss. She does not respond to anything you guys have said. Can I do an insight check? I'm going to give it to you for free. She straight up cannot hear you. She is cut off from the outside world as far as you can tell. This is a one-way glass type of situation. Whoa. Can we break the glass? We must make haste. You can see two major options. This is slightly thick. It would take some effort. There is also a large, heavy bolt set in there. Either way, this is going to take some sort of action hero level feats of strength to get open. Well, we can do that. I spit in my hands and I try to heave ho. Okay, roll me a strength check. Can I help with that? Please. You can. Roll with advantage. Negative four with advantage. I got a 12. This is actually the sort of latch that like a person could do with just like a little bit of force, but for you guys, it's a goddamn task. So you start pulling... And it's hard. Like, you've got your legs planted on it. You're pulling on the bolt. I'm sweating. And it gets to the point where DB has to get under to the bottom of the bolt. And he's flapping with all of his might, pushing up. I want to kick it. I want to kick the bolt with my legs. Absolutely. My body to wedge it. Nothing else would move it but those but those kicking legs, man. But them legs. I get my calves out. Just push. That bolt comes up. <laughs> That force from the kick is enough to launch it up just enough for you to pull it off to the side and gravity takes over. It clangs to the floor. And immediately, this whole apparatus rotates slightly as if on a hinge and pulls away from the wall. Mist instantly forms. So whatever the difference was between the two atmospheres, it's just filled with mist that just kind of spills out as she's... Oh, no, please, I, I haven't done anything. I I mean you no harm, mister. Howdy, man, we're here to get you out. Come on, we're Pearl. Oh, Pearl. Fumbly, you're the only one who's not paying attention to this, like, who wasn't involved in, like, opening this, which means you're the only one who would notice out the window a flash of bright orange. You recognize it. It's the color of the portal Remmer left through. Pixies! We must make haste. We must get out. We must leave right now. I know you're in there, Pixies! Oh, oh, sugar. Honey, iced tea, we're in trouble. Can I start setting fire to his, to his lab? I had to leave the spa, Pixies! How are you going to set fire to this lab? Do you know what expensive teleportation magic is, Pixies? I just want to know in general, because like you don't have any spells that make fire, so I just... No, but I'm, I'm a well-trained pearl operative. I grab my crossbow bolt, I, grab, I, I rip off the other crossbow that's glued to the bottom, I use it as like a, like a flint, and I start going over <laughs> to like a book, and I just start trying to set a fire. <laughs> you go over, and the, the closest loose paper is that map and you look down and you see like the journal is open there are pictures of pixies more pixies people you know people who are important he's been watching all of you and you look down at that map and you see there are enchantments on pearl hq you can only find it if you know where it is you can't just walk it you would never bump into it there's little enchantments little uh little illusions that basically make you always steer wide. It's in the Hidden Grove. And he has the exact location marked 
if he were to go to the hidden grove, he would be able to tear that tree down. Oh, well, I'll fold that up then. <laughs> I'll take that with us. You'd grab that map, take it. Any other papers? Books? Yeah, absolutely. The journal you can go over to and you just start kind of... Yeah, fuck him and all his work. And it starts going up. All right, we're going to get out. I don't know what I've done. There are enough pages that this should actually be able to catch on to the desk. It's awesome. It's awesome. we got to go. <laughs> I'm in too deep. And now we're going to go into initiative. Natural 20. I got a 25. I guess I'm not rolling for... Oh, you can roll for both of them, but I have a feeling at this point that you're going to go after the pixies. Remier got a 13 plus one is 14. Ah, oh, I got 14 as well, but is your dex higher than mine? No, yours is plus five. My dex is 13. Yeah, so yours is definitely higher. And uh, I guess Kiev can't really do anything until he's not a constrained category. Yeah, until I mess up or get damaged, yeah. Roll anyway to find out like where the slot's gonna fall. Natural one. Okay. So he's going last. Cool, so it's Pixies, Remmer, and then Kiev, hypothetically. Whichever Pixie rolled the highest, honestly, since the three of you are all going like as a mass, I'm not particularly concerned with what order you guys go in. So who's taking the first slot here? I'm waiting for my leader. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. What do you want to do? I will immediately kick into gear. You will see my wings start beating like crazy as I try to mobilize us as a, a force. Move together, I say, as we I try to get everyone to fly in a formation. And we are, we are getting ready. We're fanning the flames with our wings as they, they heat up too. Yeah. Because uh, we want to spread as much fire and chaos as possible. I knock over a glass of water for fun, uh, like a cat off a side of a just, table. Just off the desk. Breaks on the ground. Everyone's just smashing things. It's just anarchy <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Which, for the record, is a valid tactic the Pixies use frequently against wizards because they tend to walk on the ground. So if there's broken glass on it, that sucks for wizards. And it doesn't matter to you flying losers. <laughs> Fools. Without shoes. Losers. <laughs> uh, and I will take flight. And I will attempt to probably fly back up the chimney this we're gonna say that this whole uh fucking place is like 25 feet across so with 30 feet fly speed you can get basically to the chimney by the end of your turn okay yeah i'll make my way to the chimney i i take off my hat and i put it on the caterpillar and then i telepathic i telepathically say to him um one of us now, and I take out another hat and put it on my, on my head. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go. Absolutely. Kind of with a cowboy hat. I have no idea where you got telepathy, but fine, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the caterpillar looks confused. Like, Kiev looks confused, but is also really happy to have a hat. Sorry, Kiev is under a hat now. Doesn't matter what <laughs> Kiev looks like. <laughs> yeah, my back just, just, just has a hat as far as we're concerned. Ye Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. All right, so I can't cast much of my spell kit if I'm concentrating on this uh, Kiev. Yeah. So I'm going to dash all the way up the chimney if I can. I want to dash 60 feet. You get up and you can see Remmer textbook uh, humanoid strategy flaw. They look level. They're looking through the window. They can You can tell that he can see like some of your allies moving around in there. Yeah. But he ain't looking up. He ain't looking up. You're basically floating like 10, 15 feet above the roof, staring down at this wizard. And that's your turn. Benji. I will... We're giving you the hat thing for free. <laughs> nice. The wizard, can I see him? So if you don't go to the chimney, you can see him through the window of the laboratory. When he showed up, he opened all the windows. Is he within 60 feet of me? Absolutely. Can I cast Phantasmal Force? You absolutely can. The illusion that I want to take, like, if, if this works, I want to see this. I want him to see the side of his house, like, explode out and then just million hordes of Pixies and bees. Oh god, that's fucking and terrifying. Squirrels. <laughs> and, squ and squirrels. A lot of dead squirrel zombies just like coming at him. Alright, Aram. 
Roll me your uh, wisdom save. Wisdom saving throw for. Or sorry, it's okay. intelligence saving throw. Oh, you I say squirrel okay. zombies? Yeah. Because he's killed a lot of squirrels. That's gonna be a fifteen plus seven is twenty two. So as it this horde work. just <laughs> swarms out, Remmer's just standing there. He doesn't move. His eyes don't move. There's literally bees flying through his face. I know your secrets, Pixers. All right, that didn't work since that was my action. I go yeehaw and I fly to the base of the chimney. So you're there with a uh... Aram. It's your turn. As he arrived and announced a command word and all the windows flew open, he now looks into the house. You're not getting away, pixies, not with that valuable cargo. And he casts Flock of Familiars and summons three bats, who then go screeching into the house after you. And you all know the problem with bats. Bats echo locate. You can't turn invisible and hide from a bat. I summon them inside the lab. They have a fly speed of 30. They would be upon them. All right. So bats have a plus zero attack bonus. Yes. So just make a flat roll against George and Benji. All right. One bat goes for George. Who's getting attacked twice? Okay. So George is getting attacked twice because George is the leader. Uh, The first roll against George is going to be a 10 plus zero. Nothing. Zero. So 10 misses you. You just dodge out of the way as a bat comes soaring past you. The second one is a 10. So you dodge (laughs) that one too. Oh, he's so good. And the third one comes for Benji's character. That's an 11. Still a miss. Oh, no, they're too skilled. Powerful combatants, these pixies. (laughs) We're the best. We're all the best. That's why they chose us. Back at the top of the initiative, George. You had the first slot. I will will dash up to Honeydew, and I would like to try and... You are currently engaged with two bats. So you would take two attacks of opportunity if you did this. I'm going to chance it. (laughs) Wow. All right. First roll is a nine. That's a miss. My second one is a 13. You are a lucky son of a bitch. (laughs) I zip up to Dingleberry and I say, quick, hand me the bag. Okay, I hand him the bag. And then for the rest of my movement, I'm going to keep flying directly up. So how how close are all the bats to um, Benji? Right now, there's one that's like directly on top of him. The other two are like five feet away. Can I prepare to cast sleep for the trigger of when uh, when he leaves their range? Yeah, then absolutely. Yeah, so when when Ben... Uh, sorry, Ben, what's your character's name again? Honey Star. So when Honey Star and our rescue leave, sleep. I will disengage and then fly up. Okay, that'll leave you right next to... Uh, right next to Matt, right next to DB. Uh, and I'm not going to have you roll for it because bats have one hit point. Three... Screeching bats are just flying just up flying the chimney. Up after them, just straight back down. Um, <sighs> Into the embers. Do they catch fire? I don't think that matters because they're they're coming up the chimney, right? So by the time you time this out, they are 15 feet in the air, which means they take a d6 of falling damage and all of them die. Splat, splat, splat. Oh, I didn't want to kill the things, but... To be fair, as soon as they die, they just turn into magical dust again because they're not real. It's a shame they had to die, but... And then I think a naughty word in my head and go, and I leave. (laughs) It is uh, Remmer's turn. So two of them are 45 feet in the air, and we have uh, Honeystar, who is just at the mouth of the chimney. So does Remmer now, has he seen them up at the top of the cabin? Has he seen them come out of the... um, All right, so Remmer just goes, Pixies! I have had enough. And he casts a devastating spell. So two of them are basically out of my range, but just as Honeystar comes up, he looks you right in the eye as his fingers curl into a tight ball and he casts Mage Hand. Mage Hand can hold five pounds. 
Hold a five pound bag of flour out in one hand. See how much strength it takes. No, no, Mei Chan carries 10 pounds in fifth edition. Oh, sorry, Mei Chan's got 10 pounds, so 10 fucking pounds. It's double the strength. Okay, so what I'm gonna have you do is this is a spell, so I'm gonna let you use your intelligence modifier, but you're gonna make a grapple check. All right. Then I'm gonna need you to make a acrobatics check to try to not get grappled by this spectral hand that you see form and just try to grab you as you fly up out of the chimney. Good luck, Benji. 17. I rolled a 16, but I haven't added my bonuses. (laughs) So I rolled a 16 plus 7 is 23. Damn, he got me just snatches them as soon as like like, like this invisible hand just forms around you and you can all just see the spectral outline of it as he's struggling inside. Get your meats off me. This is fucking dangerous because you know the amount of force that sort of thing can put out. You watched him throw that squirrel. Is he gonna throw me? Do you have any bonus actions you're gonna pull around? Yes, to start to drag him back toward me. Sorry, you can use your action to control the hand. It's not a bonus action. Uh, so I can't do that is what you're saying? Right. Where is the kidnap pixie right now? Where is she right now? Uh, I'm going to say that basically the two of them were flying together. So she was neck and neck and you grabbed and it's just whichever pixie was a little bit closer. As luck would have it, Honey Star. And she got out. She's probably another five-ish feet away by the time she realizes, turns around and sees honey star there trapped in this massive hand i would have threw myself in the way of it if it was like coming out of nowhere it's about to grab him like i would have got her absolutely it was coming for her and that's why you failed the save was you check her out of the way she catches herself and writes herself and turns around to you grasped in this fucking smash bros final destination hand that brings us to the top of the initiative order I will dash directly up one more time, 60 feet up, and I will say over my pearl badge, Keep him still. Like, this is a actual full dash for the record. It's not like you being flareful. Cool, cool. Yeah, so I'm going to assume that you're putting a bit of a cant on this one. Call it 100 feet directly above Remmer. Yeah. Am I reading your intentions right there? Yes, yes, you are. Beautiful. (laughs) Perfect. Matt. Well, uh, I can't, I've got no spells I can cast because I'm all concentrating already. So, strictly speaking... You got, you got your crossbow. Yeah. Well, also, not worrying about that. Uh, I think you have two... Sleep and Dispel Magic are immediate duration. Oh. Everything else Pixies have is yeah, it's, it's concentration. Uh, well, I've already used Sleep. Could I prepare to cast Dispel Magic akin to a counter spell? Sure, I'll give you that. Absolutely. Because you use your reaction to cast the spell, it's instantaneous. Yeah, no, I'm cool with that. I'll do that. I will, I will, uh, I'll prepare like a little bowl of fractal rainbow magic and I'll like be ready to hurl it like a baseball if it's a, if a spell effect goes off. Honestly, I think it would be better if Pixies had counter spell instead of Dispel Magic just because then you can have like 30 of them flying around in a grove and oh, God. players trying to like detect things and a bunch of oh, pixies going, no. Nope. no. Oh, that would be Take incredible. It no. <laughs> It'd also be real obnoxious and I'd think it was funny as shit. Me too. Oh, I <laughs> hate that so much. <laughs> that's why it's funny. Dude, George is smiling and he yeah, like, it's, that it's that's awesome. the dichotomy there. He's like, that's awesome. And I'm like, I know what George is going to do with it. If this show gives our listeners and our players more ways to hurt their own GMs, then we have done a service. Oh, you monsters. Ben, we're back to you. So I'm going to, we're just going to leave it as a flat DC so we don't have to worry about it. The, the 23 is just going to hold. You've got a plus five. If you want to escape the grapple, you can try. Otherwise, you can take actions as per normal. Grapple actually does nothing to impede you doing stuff. Um, I, I'm going to use my action to taunt. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn around in the mage hand, and I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at him and be like, "You don't got the stones," and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna spit at him, but I don't know <laughs> if it's gonna make it to him or not. I'm gonna try spit it. Absolutely not. You're 30 feet away, and you're a pixie. He sees me spit. <laughs> in yeah. disrespect. I know the intent. Yeah, yeah, that was very disrespectful. Um, 
that is, that's, that is, no, I'm gonna cast a spell magic on the mage hand. <laughs> as you spit, you cast a spell magic. Yeah, as I spit, I cast, I spit on the mage hand, and that's my dispel magic. <laughs> yeah. Pixie spit is anti-magic. <laughs> it's peppermint tobacco. Yeah. You spit on the hand, you rub it in, and it just dissipates the spell. I rub nice. it because I can't use my hands. I'm gonna rub it in with my beard. <laughs> Dispel magic is enough. Uh, Aram Remmer, you have like your hand out. You have to do that thing where you like mimic the motion, and you immediately just feel like the resistance in your actual hand start to dissipate as your connection to the spell starts to fade, and then it just breaks. It's almost as if. On, on your end, Honey Star, it's almost as if you're being squeezed until it squeezes hard enough to shatter itself. So you got to move action still, or you got to move still, and you have explicit instructions to stop him from going anywhere. What do you want to do? Um, is, is Tiptoe next to me? Tiptoe's sister, uh, is, like, a little ways past you. You, like, knocked her out of the way to take the grapple instead, but she's a little bit past. I'm gonna give all the stuff that I, that I took, so the map and all that information. I'm like, you gotta give this to the big boss lady. <sighs> okay. Don't cry for me. And I fly towards <laughs> Remy. Oh, no. With my uh, with my crossbow out and a, and, and a dagger in my mouth. <laughs> Aram, you've got a pixie just dive bombing you. What do you do? I would just kind of wind up a bit. Gust of wind. As soon as they get within like 10 feet, just blast them back. All right, I want my, I want my dispel to go off. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, shit. You, oh, shit. The wind, like, starts up, and it's basically enough to get your hair moving. The hat starts to get a little loose, and you're just about to reach back to stop it. And then you hear the old sylvan words to a counter spell. tee <laughs> And a wee little giggle at the end, because one of the words in the spell is naughty. But the wind, the moment it kicks up, just dies back down. God, pixies are a pain in the ass. Is there anything you want to do, Aram? I'm just stunned that they got through. So I yeah. think I would just like hold my hand out, and then all of a sudden a pixie comes bursting through with a crossbow and a dagger. I'm just stumbling backwards. All right. George, do what you must. As I'm 100 feet above, I look at the caterpillar in the bag. I raise the hat off the caterpillar and whisper to it, one last ride, my friend. As I give it a little kiss on its gross face. Wait, what? What do you mean? And when I kiss it, I cast Polymorph on it and turn it into a draft horse. <laughs> and as it falls, <laughs> as it falls, I place the hat back on it and watch it plummet. So Aram, make that save. <laughs> Well, that's going to be a four. Minus, Minus two, two is two. <laughs> DB, you feel like the little hold in your head, the concentration you've been maintaining. It's like there was like a little rattling noise that you hadn't noticed anymore. It'd been so long. It just stops. And then all of a sudden there's a horse. Uh, a rum. <laughs> so falling in D&D is instantaneous. Yes. <laughs> Which is dumb, but yes, it is. Well, also, like, if you want, I can prove to you that it's really not that long, but it's no, not I worth mean, it. No, I mean, I'm only 100 feet in the air, so it is, in effect, instantaneous. I'm going to give you a dex save for half damage, but this is going to be 10d6 coming at you. All right, dex save for the horse. <laughs> no, sorry, the, the horse doesn't matter. The horse is going to die. The horse is going to <laughs> oh. re on polymorph. I go to 17. I should be able to, like, roll with it or something. Okay, oh, but shit. the horse... Okay, how many hit points does a draft horse have? I don't know. I might, I, maybe I'll live. Who knows? Okay, so a draft horse has uh, 19 hit points. Yeah, I could live. I could live. It doesn't die. There's a total of 26 hit points that it could go through. Yeah, I hit the ground when I rolled. I could live through this. The draft horse is going to take half damage. Also roll for Remmer, who is being crushed by a draft horse. <laughs> George, you can pull up your 10d6 if you want, because you get to roll damage for this one. It's your attack, technically. Remmer got a six plus two is eight. Okay, so he's taking the full 10d6. 
Okay, I got a 47. Jesus. <laughs> is that instant death? Oh my god. <laughs> Half of that is 24. Or it's 23, I guess, with the rounding. But so Remmer looks up and an entire draft horse. What the? Like he's looking directly at this pixie, getting ready to like engage in combat. Honey Star, you are about to get on top of him. You're just direct hand to hand combat. Like, I'm going to take this wizard down and save my friends. And then a horse crushes him to death. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is the horse hits the ground and there is a sickening crunch as horse and people bones break Ooh. and immediately there isn't a horse anymore and then there's just a fucking pseudo dragon who seems beat to shit <laughs> and very unhappy but is still alive you're free you're free it has three hit points left oh, oh. i want to give him my good berry oh, there's a little slightly left. right <laughs> slightly <laughs> less wounded now a single cut above his eye healed yeah but i feel we have made a rapport you are free ride free and fly free i so fucking hate you if i ever see you again i'm gonna sting you Shh, i love you Fine, I love you too. Thanks for saving me. I'm I'm floating above this and I'm just looking down in shock and horror as a horse just crushed a man <laughs> and turned back into a pseudo dragon. That's the thing, is this pseudo dragon is also on the ground, uncom like writhing in pain. Yeah. In goop. Yeah, and then and then I then Honey Star comes up and strokes his face. And I'm just like, what the f hell is going on here? <laughs> I can't believe he, he believe this and i'm just start i start just doing expletives just in like fairy yeah. language just right. <laughs> <laughs> mad men all of them and i fly down and i uh i hand the um hand the hi my good berry to the pseudo dragon as well you should have some you'll feel better it's actually doing all right now uh, i do feel a little better yeah all right well i suppose we're even I kind of, I stroke the other side of their face that Honey Star isn't stroking. You're going to be free one day. He's, he, he's, he's free now. Yeah, I'm kind of free now, right? Like, I'm free. Like, well, are yeah. you putting me back in the jades? Uh, no, no. Okay, well, then I'm good. I'm free. I'm free. Great. I'll go live in the woods instead of a nice, cozy house where I got all my meals handed to me. Turns around, it's like erupts in flames. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> He, do, he, he would just look at it and sigh. He's like, well, now I have nowhere to go. Well, you can come with us. Join Pearl. Join the Pearl. His eyebrows get a little hopeful. Well, I'm just a dragon. I can't, I can't join Pearl. Like, You're not just a dragon. You're a pseudo dragon. <laughs> yeah. You ain't like One them little tear. big shot dragons. Yeah, I... I am a pseudo dragon. I, yeah. I suppose yeah. I belong with the other pseudo people. Yeah. Yeah, you're a big strong what? boy. I think he insulted yeah. us just then, but I'm still about it. <laughs> <laughs> and we get a slow, like, <laughs> fade to black as everyone is debating, basically, whether it's an insult, whether we're all happy. No one is certain of whether this is ending, like, on good terms. But it's ending. But it's ending now. <laughs> Your title card comes up. With a question mark. Yeah. Yeah. The end. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Pixies. For more information about us, notes for each episode, and ways you can help support the show, head over to killeverymonster.com. If any of the ideas we've discussed on the show have sparked some of your own, tell us about it on Twitter at KEM Podcast. You'll find me at DJ Malenfant and Aram at Aram Vardian. For ad-free episodes, early releases, bonus episodes, print-ready maps, our new audio DMs notes, and my character sheets for each encounter, head over to patreon.com slash killeverymonster. You can also listen to ad-free episodes and bonus content by subscribing to the show on Apple Podcasts. Our intro theme and many of the sound effects you hear in the show were created by BattleBards. Check them out at battlebards.com. This episode was produced by Aram Vartian and Dylan Malenfant. I also did the editing. Our guests were Matt Brown, Benji Napton, and George Goldfeather. You can find all three of them at youtube.com slash split the party. 
And if you are anything like me and all that information just fell right out of your head, you'll find everything you need at killeverymonster.com. And we'll see you next time for Kill Every Monster. Monster.